and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication from me, declares the Lord.
this time on the edges that uh, grab our sacraments here. Yeah. It's really good to see you guys. I know it's a it, it feels so different, it really does. But it's just so good to see your faces. Um, but this is a moment of communion, moment of remembering Jesus. And more than anything, I want you to remember Jesus. Remember that he loves you. I think a lot of times when we face hardship, we begin to forget that God loves us. We start believing that God doesn't like us because maybe we did something or we're in the wrong spot. But I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that God loves you. And that communion and the cross is a remembrance of his love for us. Not only his work on the cross, but his love to step into that work. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, think about that for a minute. He could be doing a lot of other things. This is hard, hard to break down. Hold, hold on for one second. in my hand because it reminds me that it was me who broke the body. Sometimes we say it's someone else, but it was me. And that we are in need of God's grace every single day. Every single day that God pours out his grace towards us. But on that day, he gave bread, he broke it. And he says, this is my body that has been broken for you. And when he says you, sometimes we think everyone else, but this is my body that is broken for me. And he says, when we come together, never forget him. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take this bread together. so much for your body broken for us, God. Let us never forget. Every time we come together, Lord, let us remember what it takes, Lord God, what it took for your grace to be lavished on us. On that same night, he took the cup and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant. I'm starting something new in my blood. Every time you come together, drink of this cup and do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup to God. And your sacrifice, Lord, washes us white as snow, that we cannot be any more righteous than when Jesus makes us righteous. We don't need to work for it. It is by an act of God, a move of God, the love of God. We are made white as snow today. So whatever we came in with, Lord God, let us remember you have cleansed us. And we stand on Jesus' righteousness as our righteousness. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo. I love communion. It just reminds me of the goodness and the love of God. I'm going to give some announcements. We still have uh, care packages that we're putting together for Christmas, uh, the families, and, and there's just needs out there that we're going to meet. And so uh, we're, we're going to put a drop-off uh, uh, spot so that we can drop it off. Or some people are just shooting Amazon a certain way. Uh, but we are just moving. Uh, we are, uh, we're doing that for the care packages. And also, if you are giving, please give online. That's our best way of giving. And uh, we just thank you for your continued giving. Um, we, you guys have been so faithful 
and uh, so good. Uh, we have been uh, we've been able to give, and even today, it's probably you know I want to give this to Pastor Elayu even as we start, and this is from your giving. Thank you so much, and that uh, we all our our funds are going out into Ethiopia, into Africa, and we have been giving faithfully to this ministry. You have been giving faithfully to this ministry, to minister to hundreds of people who are in need, to a, a church that needs to be rebuilt, missionaries that need to be trained, widows that need to start a business. And he's going to tell you more. I'm going to, I'm going to close my mouth. Uh, but I'm so every time I'm with him, I'm so excited because the gospel has not stopped. The move of God is not stopped. It, it, it is flowing from you guys, and sometimes we don't see it, and so we don't feel it. But I'm telling you, it's continuing to move forward. And today is our a secret church service where we focus on the churches all around the world that are meeting, maybe in, uh, in huts, meeting in, in places underground, meeting in burnt down churches where they were worshiping. That was the video we got to see on Facebook. Um, but just so many things, and they're going through it, and, and they are our brothers and sisters. And one day in heaven, we will be celebrating with them. And that's our reality with them. And so even now, I, I want you guys to give a hand to Pastor Elayu as he speaks. And, uh, and let him just open up, uh, just open up your heart as he speaks. for uh, Pastor John, his family, his leadership, his team, and the congregation. We are so grateful for what you are doing uh, with us, for the partnership, for your prayers, for your encouragement, so that we can do more uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, we, I mean, because of your support, we'll be able to sponsor 13 hard-working widows to start their own business. Can you use the microphone? Yes. <laughs> online, yeah. So uh, we have uh, we have started uh, businesses for hardworking widows. Yeah. Thirteen hardworking widows has started their own business. Man. Uh, it's it's huge, you know. Yeah. A widow with five or six kids, without any support, you can imagine what could happen for her and for her generation. But you are lifting up these widows. Uh, because of your support. And we are training leaders. Amen. I mean, that, that's very important, actually. Without missionary leaders, without uh, uh, visionary leaders, you cannot reach the world. Nature. So we are uh, training, uh, raising up emerging leaders. Um, uh, I mean, it's, we know that it's very hard time. COVID, persecution. I mean, the gospel will not be stopped because of persecution, because of COVID. We are uh, doing leadership training even right now. We have 300 church planters in our training right now. We are doing the training. I mean, we take responsibility. We, we are not bringing 300 together. We are taking responsibility and training in groups because we don't want to stop the work of the Lord. It has to go forward. I mean, we are doing uh, leadership training for Three other 300 reformed priests from the Coptic Church. We are reaching the Coptic Church. We are reaching the Coptic Church through their own priests. So we are training 300 reformed priests, uh, priests, and we have actually 600 saved priests in our network, and they are doing the ministry. They are not exposed. But they are doing the ministry underground and transforming the whole church. Amen. This church is 52% of the Ethiopian population. Can you tell us about the Coptic church? Yeah, one of the challenges um, when I speak, 
in America about the Coptic Church, some people are disappointed. But the Coptic Church is like Catholics, but the difference is they don't have their own ark. They carry ark even today, like the Old Testament. And they believe that that ark is saving their life. They know Jesus is a savior, but they believe that they need mediator, and the mediators are angels, saints, and all those kinds of things. So there is a, a cult teaching there, mysticism there. So we are avoiding that by training their own priests and sending out to uh, their, their own community. And uh, we are also rebuilding a church which was destroyed by Orthodox believers. One of the, the ladies, when I was sharing to a big church, one of the ladies came up when I was speaking about Orthodox Church and it said, you are a liar. How the Orthodox Church can persecute, persecute the Evangelical Church? It is real in Ethiopia. They are persecuting, they are killing, they are burning our churches. And they have burned our church and because of your support, we are rebuilding the church right now. And, you know, uh, uh, today I want to share, uh, Charlie, I will give you some testimonies uh, be between uh, the, the Word of God, but I want to share uh, uh, from the Word of God, uh, Hebrew 10, 23 to 24. One, one of, one of uh, the pastors actually last night uh, shared uh, this, this verse with me and uh, it, it's challenging me. Let's, let's hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spawn one another unto our love and good deeds not giving up, meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more I, as you see the day approaching. I mean, it's, we know that it is crazy time, but we know that during unprecedented time, we believe that God can do unprecedented things in our life and in our churches, in our world. God is at work, you know, I mean, he is not stopping any moment working on behalf of us. He is working in our life, he is working in our churches, he is working in the nations. He never stopped working. I want just to ask you four questions. I, I mean, it says, ours were very clean. I mean, it means unwavering faith. One of the questions that we have to ask today, are you full of faith? During this hard time, are you full of faith? One of our, our uh, new converts is um, a new Muslim convert. He came to know the Lord from Muslim. And, uh, you know, we, we have seen him his hand was cut. I mean, I, I want just to show to just one person if you'll be able to see him. He came to know the Lord last May. I mean, he's Muslim. He accepted Christ as his personal savior. And the Muslim leaders, imams, came and asked him to denounce Jesus. And he said, no. I will not denounce Jesus. I believe him. He gave me the most important peace that I have never had in my life. So I will not denounce him. And they came, stoned him, and cut his left hand. And uh, he, he, he was, he, he regained, he regained, uh, he, he, we, we took him to the hospital. Uh, he was released from the hospital in August, last August. And he said, 
You know, it is very hard time. There is hardship. I lost my hand, but I am ready to give my life for the Lord. I am ready to die, not just my hand, but I want to die for Christ. I mean, he, he said that I'm growing in my face if even my hand is cut. I'm growing my, in my face even I was stopped. The bread of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Whenever they kill us, whenever they persecute us, we grow. Are you growing in your face today? Yes, this is very hard time. This is, this is unprecedented time. There, yeah, there, is, there is financial issue. There is, I mean, uh, the sickness. There is, uh, there is trouble in the nation uh, because of election. Whatever. Are you growing in your face at this hard time? Are we growing? I mean, this is very important that I believe in my, my in the bottom of my heart that after this, we are going to be stronger and shine out. That's, that's my belief. Are we feel full of faith? Romans 12, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are we studying the word of God at this hard time? Most of the people are pushed out from their work and sitting in their homes and are they studying the word of God? Are they worshiping the Lord? Are you praying more? Even right now I'm just seeing, I have a small church in, in Aurora. I see that non-believers, unchurched people even ask us to come to their home and pray for them. God is doing something in the people's lives, even in the unchurched people. They are asking for prayers. Whether the persecution in Africa or the COVID or life challenges here, we have to be full of faith that God is doing something in this globe. Are you growing in your faith? Are you be, I mean, reading the word of God? Are you giving your life to the Lord at this unprecedented time? It is time, I think, to be rooted, to be grounded and planted for the work ahead of us. There is a huge movement that's going to happen in the whole world. And are you ready? Are you personally ready for that? Are we personally ready for that? I want to ask you a second question. Are you feeling close to God? Are you feeling close to God? Or are you in discouragement and shame? We know that God is very close to us. God's word says in Acts 17:27, God this God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him so he is not far from any of us. We know that God is near to us. God is close to us. We know that God, I mean, do we have any other hope? Do we have any other hope with this all challenges that we see? The only hope for the world is Jesus Christ. He is the only hope. He is near to us. Are we near to him right now? Are we ready even to go? Hope if he comes to take us. Are we ready? Are we ready to go home? Are we close to him at this hard time? One of uh, the ladies who lost her husband during this persecution in August, just 
two months ago. You know, we, we reach out to everyone who are suffering. And she lost her husband for his face. She lost her husband for his, his face. And she said, and are you? I am close to God than ever. And I am proud of my husband for he died for his face. What an amazing, what an amazing motivation. I am so much close than ever after I lost my husband. And I am proud of him because he gave his life for the gospel. I mean, this is I mean, this, this is such an amazing move of God in some individual uh, lives. We know that God is always at work. No matter what happens, he has unconditional love for us. Unconditional. Unconditionally, he loves us. This hard time, he's our hope. He is near to us to help us. Near to us to deliver us. Near to us to protect us. Amen. Nothing else we can trust. We trust in God. I want to ask you another question. What does this season reveal to you about you and your family. What does this season teach, teach you? What does this season reveal to you? What, what are you learning from this season? I mean, we have to, we have to check ourselves. We have to do a check and balance to our life. Unwavering faith leads us to good deeds. I mean, are you doing good at this moment of your life? Are you ready? And are you ready to examine yourself at this season? What are you learning from this season? What are we learning from this season? Are we evaluating the whole situation? Are we redeeming the situation? Are we redeeming our time? It's very important to look into ourselves. We always, I mean, are tempted to look into someone else, to our side. But I want to invite you to look to yourself, to you look to you, your, your inside. We have to examine ourselves. What things are teaching? I mean, learn, what things are we learning from this situation? One of the pastors, I've called this pastor, and uh, he said, let me show you first the picture. He said, are you? Yes, there is persecution. Yes, our church is burned down. Yeah, I mean, they came and just burned down the church. They fired the church. But he said that we are looking to ourselves. We are not done what we were to, to accomplish that God has asked us to do. We are evaluating ourselves. And we believe that, yes, that this church is burned down, but we believe that God will do a glorious thing in our city. And that is true. We are rebuilding the church right now in partnership with Hill City. And it is glorious. It was, it was a church with a stick one, 
that we are building a block wall church and some people are giving their life because of the glorious the glory of the church some people are giving their life whatever hardship we face it we, we are tempted to say this happened because of this and this happened because of this but god has a reason for everything that happens in our life and in our world are we seeing ourselves are we checking ourselves we have to do a check and balance in ourselves i want to ask you another question are you still holding on promises that god has made to you are you still holding yes there is hardship yes there is covid yes there is financial issues there there is election issues there is so much is going on in the world right now so much is going on in your life right now so much is going on in our churches right now but are we holding on the promise god has made for us we have a huge huge promise that never wavered and shed the hope that we have in christ the inheritance that we are going to take are you still holding on promises that god has made to you your family and your church for me second timothy 2:13 says if we are faithful if we are faithless he remains faithful if we are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself god is faithful any promise god, that god has given you will never be shaken by covid will never shaken by any problems that we face today are you holding that promise are you holding the promise that god has given to you to your family and to your church family we have to examine ourselves in this way the challenge that we face the discontent that we see should not divert us from the promise that Jesus has given us an eternal promise um you know i had been a church planter for the last 25 years and uh, this persecution has taken my family's life my mom and my sister died killed by an accuser that one of my brothers went to the prison and wavering face we cannot stop the promise that god has given us because of challenges so he he went to the prison and uh, met this killer and told him about Jesus and he came to Jesus while he was in prison and after 12 years he was released and came to our village and he is right now he is our nominee to be a church planter is a killer for my family but i am nominated him to be a church planter because it's bigger than i mean his gifting from god is bigger than what he has done on our family we forgive him and he is going to, we are going to use his giftings to expand the kingdom of god so he is our nominee to be a church planter right now any challenge any persecution or any thing that we are facing today will not divert us from the promise that Jesus Christ has given us I want to ask you the final question 
This is a challenging time. It is a hard time, but are you still connected with the body? Are you still connected with the body? Whether it is online or in person, are you still connected with the body? 1 Peter 4, 10 said, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in, it, in its various forms. We have to be connected with the, the body of Christ. Whether it is online or in person, we have to be connected with our brothers and sisters. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing it. It's, I mean, it's, it's, I, mean I, I, I don't know any other time that I need people in my life than this time. You need people in, in your life. Jesus had needed people in, in his life. He had three people in his circle who praised when he prayed, cried when he cried, joyful when he was joyful. There were three people who, uh, whom, I mean, he trusted and prayed for him and see what he is doing. We need people right now. This is a, a time that you need people. Be connected to the church. Be connected to the body of Christ. Encourage one another. Can you call for two people every week in your congregation or outside of your congregation and encourage one another? I mean, it always when I call to somebody, I may bless him, but after I spoke with him, you know, encourage him and pray with him, I'm fired up. I get that. I get the blessing actually. Are you ready in this holiday season to call two people? In these five days, six days? Let's be connected to the body of Christ. Whether it's online or in person. Right now we have 300 families. Persecuted, displaced, and stationed in the in a church and a police station. They are sheltering in the church and in the police stations. They are persecuted. Their, their, their homes are destroyed by Muslims. And their, their businesses are destroyed. I mean, the whole city is destroyed because there were Christians in that city. They destroyed it. And they are stationed in a police station or in a church. But what I, I mean, what I have seen was very encouraging. We have sent a team of people to encourage and inspire. And they said, do we have people besides us? Do we have people that stands for us? Do we have people that prays for us? Do we have people that helps us? I mean, they, they are, I mean, encouraged so much. And uh, we are now, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's crazy, but we are, we are now doing something. We are taking one, I mean, one family to another family. We are, what we call it, um, uh, foster. We foster, we foster home. A family, just to one Christian family, until we rebuild their homes and their businesses. We are actually, God is favoring us to rebuild their homes and to bring back their businesses. And God is giving us resources to do that. But the little things that you do to someone can raise up them, can inspire them, can encourage them. 
I have seen these people encouraged and uh, rise up to do the work of God while they were in uh, police stations, while they were in the churches. Something that you do, something little that you do can change the life of an individual. So, brothers and sisters, can I ask you these questions again? Just, are you full of faith at this unprecedented time? Are you feeling close to God? Or are you in discouragement and shame? Do you need some help? If you are discouraged, you need some help. Be transparent. If you are in shame, be transparent. You need some help. One of the pastors last week had, I mean, an affair. He could have, he, if he was transparent, he could have help that he needs. If we are in discouragement or shame, we need help. Be transparent and get the help that you need. So are you feeling close to God at this hard time? What does the last and this season reveal to you about yourself? Are you ever stronger than before or are you getting weaker? We have to test ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. The other question I want to ask you, are you still holding on promises that God made to you? your family, and your church family. The, the, the final question, are you still connected with the body? Let's encourage one another. Let's lift, lift up one another. Let's build up one another. Let's pray. Pastor, come in and pray for us. Heavenly Father, just bow our heads for a moment. Let's take a moment just to listen to how the Holy Spirit would speak to us. If you would just please just close your eyes. And just say in, in, your, just in your inner voice, God, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. As you're hearing the testimonies of our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia, God, challenge me. Awaken my spirit. You can redeem every situation, God, and use it for your glory. Lord, help me hold on to the promises of God. Lord, remind me of how much you love me, how much you were for me, how much you were with me. Bring the body of Christ closer together today. Just take a little moment. God, speak to our church. Speak to our church, Lord God. Speak to our church, Lord God. Speak to our church, Lord God. Church, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for guiding us and bringing us together. We love you so much. And we know, and I just thank every person that came out today. Lord, let us remember that we are a church around the world, Lord. And we have brothers and sisters, Lord, that are struggling with us, Lord. And I pray that we widen our view of what you're doing. We continue to pray for a global call all over Africa, Lord God, where they're training and unleashing, Lord God, people 
love you who are called according to your purpose, Lord. I pray let us remember we are loved and we are called according to your purposes. And let us be who you say that we are, light of the world, salt of the earth, Lord God, followers of Jesus. And I just thank you as we leave today, keep us safe, Lord God. Bring wisdom, and I pray that we leave with more levity and peace that passes all understanding. And we cast all our cares on you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.